Okay, so laid out on the table in front of me are all the flotations that we're going to be testing in this video. So we've got the power float, the U-shaped power float. We've got the dual side-by-side um, -side power float I'm calling it. I actually don't know what it's called, but this is the smaller version. So there are two versions of this. We'll be testing the smaller version, which is the probably the most common version for um, foot launch paramotor pilots. Uh, we've got the Agama. We've got the PBGSmoke.com inflate float system. And then we have a standard PFD that is not for paramotoring, but is just marketed for boaters or whatnot. If you're not aware of what paramotor flotation is, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's flotation for your paramotor. So in the event of a water landing, it's designed to keep you and your motor afloat. It's fun to fly over water. It's fun to foot drag the water. It's fun to fly at the beach, over lakes, things like that. And if something goes wrong, you end up in the water. There's a lot to think about. People get scared. You have a 50 pound motor on your back dragging you down. You can get tangled in the lines. You may not be conscious. A ton of things can go wrong and you can drown. Uh, and it doesn't take a lot of water to do it either. So uh, paramotor flotation is an absolute must. Before we go any further, a uh, huge thank you to ppgsmoke.com. Um, they actually provided me with their flotation and all the other flotation devices you see here um, for me to make this video. So they sent me their flotation and a few recharge kits and said test ours, test everybody else's, and let us know what you think. Okay, and finally, the paramotor frame that we'll be using for this is the SkyTap Angel paramotor frame. So huge thank you to Andrew Fuller for donating this paramotor frame for this testing. Um, I'm excited to be using this particular frame and harness um, specifically because this harness comes with a quick release. So the paramotor they usually fly back here, the Scout, comes with a pretty typical paramotor frame. You've got two leg straps, you have a chest strap, you have a ground handling strap, and at that point you can be out of the harness once you, once you release all of those. So in a water lane, you can imagine, given everything that's going on, try to get out of those two leg straps, that chest strap, that ground handling strap, especially if you have lines over you, it can be difficult. So tomorrow when I jump into the pool, we won't be doing it with a wing, but I still want to give myself the best chance to get out safely, so I'll be using the SkyTap Angel with that quick release harness. So it's just one quick pull, and I'm out of the harness, should anything go wrong. We should be good to go for tomorrow. Um, we've got a guy with a pool who's willing to let me jump in it with a paramotor frame, and uh, yeah, I guess we'll see how it goes.
All right, so we just got to our filming location. We're out here at Paradise Aviation. So this is a place about an hour away from me in South Carolina. They call it Paradise Aviation. The uh, flight field's behind me here, but I'm not here for flying today. So we're here to do the flotation testing. And the reason I came out here was, it's actually a little bit harder to find an in-ground pool um, near me, number one, and number two, an in-ground pool where somebody would let me jump into it with a paramotor. So it was a pain in the butt, but come out here anyways. I like these guys, awesome people. A uh, huge shout out to Eric and David Chilcutt for letting me come out and use their pool. Um, but we'll go over the setup real quick and then uh, we'll get started with the testing. All right. All right, so we got the SkyTap Angel all set up. Uh, the best motor analog that I could come up with was this. So this is just a cinder block. I'm not really sure how much it weighs, but it feels exactly like a motor on your back. Um, maybe a little bit lighter than the Moster 185, but I think that the buoyancy will be about the same, if not a little bit worse with this, which is good because that'll, um, that'll help with the testing. Because um, remember a motor, even though the Moster 185 weighs 30 pounds, give or take a couple pounds, um, the volume of the cylinder, the air box, the crankcase, there's air in there. So the buoyancy when, when it's in the water is not going to be like 30 pounds of, um, you know, uh, force pull. Or it's not going to be like a 30 pound brick of steel or iron that's pulling you down. So I think this is a good simulation and it feels just about right when it's on your back. We're going to have three camera angles. We'll have one right here on the frame pointed down at me. So hopefully you get a good view of the flotation. We'll have the main camera set up outside the pool. And then I'm going to set up the DJI Osmo Action underwater um, on a tripod looking up um, just to get the best angle possible. And again, here's all the flotation we'll be using. This is the power float. By the way, I just bought this and look at this. So um, this is brand new, never used. So keep that in mind for the review. Um, we got the PPGSmoke.com inflate float system, the Agama, and the dual um, power to float as well as a standard PFD. So the order we're gonna go in, I'm gonna jump in the pool with just that on my back, see how I do. Then we're gonna go PFD, and then we'll just run through all the flotations. And there's David. <laughs> um, all right, man, so let's get set it. I'm, 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 I'm excited to jump in the pool with this and see what happens, so let's get over there. Peace. All right, here is the testing facility. So the pool is five foot deep, which is nice because at any point, if I do get into trouble, I can always reach my feet down and touch. But I'm only 5'6", so I'll be able to reach my feet up just a little bit and still be floating, so that'll work perfectly. Um, I'm gonna jump in, get a feel for it, set up my underwater camera, get everything ready, and the first test will be zero flotation. So I'm gonna jump in with this on my back, no flotation, see if I can tread water, see if I can swim, see how it goes. Here we go. Okay, this is the underwater cam. Please be waterproof. All right, test number one is going to be no flotation. Yeah, it's much nicer here than it is by the coast, man. It's sunny here. Yeah. Oh, shit. This should be hard to jump. I should go... I'm just going to go forward. Okay, this is my pull. Okay, no flotation. Try to jump out as far as I can. Whoa! Boy, you better get in big Boy. trouble without it. You know that? That sinks you. Whew! Oh. Well, you went straight down right on your face. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was crazy. I forgot to put water in the gas tank to simulate uh, some amount of gasoline in the tank. But that was actually good because I jumped in, it immediately went face down, and the gas tank started pulling me up in the back. Um, and I tried swimming, tried pushing, and you might be able to do it for a little while, but if you can't get out of that motor, you're definitely going down. Um, it push, pushed me down to the bottom of the pool. Um, that quick release harness worked amazing. One quick pull, and I was straight out of it, so that worked amazing. Okay, uh, test number two is gonna be just a standard PFD. So this is an automatically inflating um, PFD, something you'd wear on a boat. So if you had no paramotor flotation, is this a viable option? We're gonna find out. Okay, 
Standard PFD. Here we go. <laughs> Okay. Oh God. So it inflated, but this is not a great position. My head is right over the water. Um, the fuel tank is definitely keeping me up. I'm trying to see if I can turn it. Okay. Definitely can't swim with this, but it is keeping me above water. Okay. So let's see if I can turn over. Okay, there's no way. So the way I have this, there's no way I can turn it a face down position. Um, so it's better than nothing. Now let's see if I can get out of the harness. Oh yeah, okay. So out of the harness fine. And this is keeping me up, so better than nothing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so there you go. Just a standard life vest PFD automatic inflating life vest here. It worked. It's definitely not ideal. When I was in the paramotor, um, it kept my head above water, which is what you want. So if I was unconscious, I'd have been fine. And I couldn't turn myself over. So that's what you're looking for. But I couldn't swim with it on. I had to let go of the paramotor uh, to get anywhere. So if you ever had to do that and your wing wasn't floating your paramotor up, you would be fine, but your paramotor might not be. So that's what we were trying to find out with this. Okay, so next test is gonna be the power float to be sure, um, the double version. So what I like about this is you have multiple mounting options. You can put it on the frame, on your shoulder straps, and there's a bit of redundancy in it. So there's two separate inflation devices. So if one fails, you still have another one. If that does happen, you still might be turned over, but at least your unit will float. Okay, power float. These better work. That's what I've been flying with over the ocean for the past year and a half, two years. It still makes me nervous. Okay. Good with that. That works, man. Yeah, that. Okay, so first thoughts on this. I like that it's not crimping my neck like the last one did. Um, I lost. Um, I can swim much easier with this. So the PFD I couldn't swim with. This I can swim pretty easily. I can even lean forward. I can lean forward. I can get my feet straight down, tread water if I needed to. Uh, the gas tank is half full, about a quarter full of water, and this is a perfect floating position. So again, these are mounted on my on my shoulder straps. They both inflated at the exact same time. They both are fully inflated, and I'm floating just fine. So very happy with that. That's awesome. Now let's just see how I can get out of the harness. Again, this is a quick release, and I'm out. And that's floating just fine. Oh. There you go. So that's how it would float without you in it. Perfect, man. Yep, so that worked great, man. Uh, very happy. Again, that, those are my personal uh, flotation units that I have been flying with for the past two years. Um, and I'm really happy with that. It, they inflated at the exact same time, evenly. Since they were mounted to the shoulder strap, I was able to move them away a little bit and get in a comfortable position. No way I'd have been able to turn myself over in the water with that pulling on my shoulders like that. I was able to swim just fine, tread water just fine. When I got out of the unit, the unit floated just fine. Um, I'm happy with that, very happy. So. Okay, so dig this. Just about to strap in for the next test. And there is a black wheel on the frame. 
big black lid off. Look at that, dude. Okay, <clears throat> so the next one we're gonna do is the ppgsmoke.com inflate float system. So this is the most similar model that I have to the to be sure that I just tested. So I'm doing those back to back, um, and we just killed a black widow on that frame. So I'm a little bit freaked out. All right, me from the future here. So real quick before you watch this next test, um, if you follow PPG Smoke on Instagram or Facebook, you might remember them releasing a statement mentioning that the original batch of units that they released potentially had an issue with the O-ring seal on the inflation device. Um, it ended up being an assembly issue at the plant, but regardless, the O-ring seal was compromised and it resulted in inflation issues. So coincidentally, the ones that I received from PPG Smoke to do this test were part of that batch and they had that issue. Um, so I had to send those back after doing the test and they sent me the actual production ones to redo the test. So I'm going to leave the original test in just to show you guys um, what can happen if you expect your flotation to inflate and it doesn't and you'll see what I'm talking about uh, when you watch this next test. But when I rank them at the end, I'm going to be ranking them on the actual production PPG Smoke Inflate Float Systems. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to follow this next test up with the actual production ones right after. Alright, peace. Okay. PPGSmoke.com Inflate Float System. Here we go. That didn't work at all. Dude. Yeah. What the fuck happened there? Know, you can see the CO2. You can see it escaping, yeah. Where was it escaping from? I couldn't tell. Okay. Here we go. Uh, this is PPG Smoke Inflate Pulse System Test Number Two. So I'm trying to see. That was work great. Yeah. Perfect. Super fast. Let's see if I can turn over. Nope. All right. Test getting out. There it is, man. <clears throat> okay, so next we're going to be doing the power to float U-shape. I'm going to mount this on the frame because that's where it fits better. And uh, I think that's where most people will mount these. Here we go. One, two, three. Get behind the harness. Oh, it inflated behind. There we go. That's what it should have done. It should have opened here too, and it's not. Oh, you see the Velcro's not opening all the way. Here it goes. That's what we should have done. All right, so let's see if I can get back in and simulate what it would feel like. 
Yeah, so it floats it, it inflated pretty slowly, it did not open all the way on the top, and I can definitely get into a face down position on this, watch. But I was I was face down in the first place, but if I do this, yeah. like I'm fucked, yeah. and I can't, like really, I can do it, I can flip it back, but if you're tangled in lines, you might not be able to do that. Okay, so the power float U-shaped, I had that mounted to the frame. So this one is where I mounted it. it. Has to do with the frame it's on, the harness I'm using. But what happened was, half of the U-shaped flotation device inflated behind my harness. So it went behind it, inflated, and got stuck. So it floated me kind of sideways and face down, and I could not, uh, I could not fix it. So I had to pull the quick release. Once I finally got out, and I pulled the pulled the side that was behind the harness out from behind the harness and it was symmetrical again, I could hear that there was still CO2 trying to come out of the cartridge but it wasn't coming out. Um, and I looked and the very top part of the outer casing for the bladder was still velcroed shut. So I had to pull the velcro on the top, yank it, and then it finished inflating. Something you would not be able to do if you were still in the harness. The good part about that is I guess that bladder's pretty strong because it could take the full pressure of the CO2 uh, and not burst, but um, it did float the unit and could float it myself, but it was not easy. If I would have been unconscious when I hit the water, I'd have been in a lot of trouble on that one for sure. Okay, this is the final test. So this is the Agama. Uh, this is a U-shaped one. Um, I think it's made by or for Nirvana. I don't know. Um, I mounted this one a little differently. So I have the middle of it mounted on the top of the frame and then the rest of it is mounted on the shoulder straps. So it's worth noting that you could have also done this with the power float U-shaped version. Um, but I wanted to try two different ways out. I did not like the way I mounted the power float, um, but I think this will give me a better chance of floating up. And I liked, the, the most successful test was the power float, uh, the, or the To Be Sure power float dual version. And I liked that the most because it was on my shoulder straps. It pulled me up and it let me swim and it floated me um, face up really well and I couldn't turn myself over. So I think this will mimic that. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead. Okay, this is the Agama. Um, yeah, u shape. here we go. Okay, I'm floating well. Um, actually, half of it inflated on one side of the frame and half of it on the other, but I'm able to move it around pretty well, pretty comfortably. Um, and yeah, it's holding me up. I don't think I can get myself. I really can't get myself in a face down position easily. I'll try. Uh, it's floated me up well. I still don't like it as much as the power float on either side because I could push those away from my face a little bit further. Um, and I thought that they, that was a little easier to swim with that. But this is still working. Um, this is floating me just fine. My feet are obviously not touching the ground. Um, I'm happy with it. All right, let's see if I can get out. Oh yeah, no problem, no problem. There you go. It'll float your unit just fine. Okay, so that's it. That was the Agama. That one worked probably the second best. I gotta go back and review it all, but that one floated me up face first. I couldn't get myself in a face down position very easily and inflated pretty quick. And it worked. So, and it floated the unit and I was able to swim with it. But there you have it, man. Okay, so here's all the flotation devices after we've used them. So this is the PFD, this is the first test we did where I just wore it over my neck like you would in a boat or something like that. Um, and it worked okay. 
Um, obviously, once you release yourself from the harness, the harness and the motor is no longer floating, but you'll be okay. Next test I did was the uh, To Be Sure Power Float. These were my personal units. They inflated fast, um, floated me great. I was able to swim. I was very comfortable floating. Um, I was really happy with that, really happy with the way they performed in the water. Next was the PBG Smoke Inflate Float System. This is the one I was most looking forward to because it had a little bit more displacement than the To Be Sure. Um, and I like the quality of the outside of this much better. So it's a thicker material. The mounting system was better. <clears throat> All right. So here is the aftermath of the second test. So they worked great, as you saw in the video, um, which is what I expected the first time. But again, the issue was a little O-ring right in there. So issue's been fixed, and they worked great. Inflated quickly, kept my head above water, couldn't turn over. Basically the same thing as the uh, Power Float to be sure. Worked the exact same way, except they have a little bit more displacement. And uh, yeah, and I like the quality of the outside a little bit better, but they worked great. Awesome. Um, next was the to be sure, the power float, the U-shaped version. This one could have been a mounting issue. It worked, it inflated, it floated me. It wasn't ideal. Had I mounted it like I did the Agama, maybe it would have worked a little bit better. Um, but um, this is also the largest CO2 cartridge here. If you had a bigger unit or a trike or some way to mount this really well, this I think would be a great option. It worked fine. And then the Agama. So the Agama worked, um, inflated quickly. I was able to swim with it. A little more restrictive than the To Be Sure because I was able to push the To Be Sure away from me. Um, whereas this is kind of around your head, but both of them kept me afloat, but it wasn't my favorite. Thanks guys. <laughs> All right guys, we are back from the testing and <clears throat> I'm gonna run you through how I ranked all of the units. So I ranked them based on a rubric that I made. I'm gonna overlay it here. I'm not gonna run through the whole thing because it's kind of in depth if I read through it all, um, but I'll just run through it real quick. Okay, so each one was ranked based on first impressions, value, quality, installation, and then finally real world testing, which was inflation, body position, and water. All those categories, I ranked them zero through three, zero, not meeting your expectations, one, partially meeting your expectations, two, meeting your expectations, and three, exceeding your expectations. Okay, jumping right in. Um, in last place was the Power Float U. So, first impressions on this one, I gave it a three. Um, it comes in decent packaging, comes with a reusable carrying case, it looks fine. The value, though, I gave it a one, only because it's really expensive and it doesn't really appear to be the best quality, which goes right into uh, the next one, which is quality. Um, if you remember in the beginning of the video, I hadn't even used it yet. It was brand new and all the stitching was coming out. Um, the embroidery was coming out. And this is, this is common between the Power Float U and the Power Float to be sure. So both those issues are notorious for having, um, uh, issues with that. Um, the installation, uh, was a three. It installed pretty easily. Um, and then the real world testing, it got a two for inflation because it did inflate quickly. Um, but based on where I had it installed, it didn't inflate correctly. Um, and then the body position in the water, um, if you remember it inflated behind me, uh, it kind of turned me on my side, so I gave it a one. Now, you can make the argument that it's the way I had it installed is why this, this, this scored low, but there was no way for me to know prior to me doing this test that it was going to do that. Um, so I guess it's something we learned during this testing. If you guys own a power float, you... Um, it's still a good unit. It, it you know, it, it inflated quickly, and it once I got it fixed and I got it pulled out from behind the harness, it floated me just fine. So if you own this unit, just be careful how you install it. Make sure it's got enough room to inflate, and I think it'll be okay. But for this test, it got an 11, which put it in fourth place. Um, the PFD again, this is not a PPG unit, so we'll just run through it quickly. First impressions, it got a three. Value and quality also a three. Installation gave it a zero because you can't install it on a foot launch unit or a trike. Um, it just sits on your shoulders like it would a, a, any life vest. Uh, the rear world testing, inflation gave it a three, inflated really quick, went right around my neck, worked just fine. And body position in the water, I gave it a one only because um, you really can't do much with it while you're in the paramotor. You have to release yourself from the paramotor, at least the one I was in, um, which allows your paramotor to either float away or sink, um, at which point you, you can swim fine, but um, it's not gonna help you with your paramotor. So, final score 13, put it in third place. 
Uh, next was the Agama. So this one got tied for second place with the Power Float, to be sure. Um, first impressions of the Agama was a one. It just came in a plastic bag. It really, really wasn't anything special. No, no carrying case. Uh, the value was one. It's also pretty expensive. Quality was a three, though. Uh, the outer material and the bladder, hardware, everything, awesome quality. I was very impressed with, with that. Um, after it was inflated, you could really tell it was it was solid quality. And even the installation hardware, the Velcro that it comes with, um, I really like the way they did that. Um, the installation was really easy. Like I said, they give you this this um, these Velcro straps that you can kind of install anywhere on the unit. Um, the real world testing, the inflation, and the body position of water both got a three. I'm not a huge fan of the U shape, or as far as U shapes go, this one was great. So the inflation inflated very quickly, went right around my neck, pulled my head above the water. Had I been unconscious, I'd have been fine. So body position in water was also a three, gave it a 14, tied for second place. Next, power float to be sure. First impressions, got a three. Comes with a, re a reusable carrying case, appears to be good quality. The value, I gave it a one. Um, it's This is one of the more expensive units on the market. Uh, the quality, I also gave it a one. The bladder and the hardware are okay but the outer material is uh, not great. Again, this is the same thing with Powerfloat U. The embroidery was coming apart, the um, uh, stitching comes apart, and then the Velcro that you mount it with also kind of falls apart. So um, I don't know how long it'll last. I've had one for a few years, and it, I keep having to cut and trim the, the, uh, the, the, the stitching because it's coming unraveled, so not too impressed with the quality. Um, installation, gave it a three. Uh, easy to install. I like the installation on the shoulder straps. That's my favorite way to install. Same thing with the PPG smoke inflate system. I think that's the easiest way. Um, and then the real world testing scored great. So it inflated quickly and easily. Um, and they both played at the same time. And then the body position of the water also gave it a three because um, it kept my head above the water. I was able to push it away from my face and swim just fine. Okay, and in first place was the PPG smoke inflate float system. So first impressions, I gave it a two. Um, only reason I gave it a two is because it didn't come with a reusable carrying case, and I like I like cases. I don't keep mine on my unit all the time, so I wish it came with something that I can keep it with. But the box and everything else it comes with is really nice, um, so you could use the box for a carrying case if you wanted to. The value a three. Um, this was the the cheapest one on the market, and also I think the highest quality one on the market. So um, quality was a three. Uh, this I can't speak to enough really you feel the difference in quality between this and the the power float units it's it's a thicker material everything from the casing to the velcro straps to the upper and lower um, retention straps everything is a thicker more durable quality it doesn't feel as flimsy um, the stitching wasn't coming apart the embroidery wasn't coming apart um, really it, it it's an awesome quality unit installation was also a three um, same thing as the to be sure, super easy to install, throw it right on your shoulder straps, attach it at the top and the bottom, super simple. <clears throat> the inflation, um, also a three, inflated nice and quick, kept my head above the water, uh, and inflated fully. And then the body position in the water, um, I also gave it a three. So same thing as a power float, I like being able to push them away from my head, you can swim just fine. Um, didn't didn't restrict any, didn't restrict my my swimming at all nothing like that so it got a 17 which put it in first place so yeah I hope this was informative for you guys uh, if not I hope it was at least entertaining uh, it was pretty fun to do thanks for PPG smoke for giving me all the stuff to make this test uh, I think it's important that um, this information is out there if nothing else to remind you guys to please fly flotation if I can leave you with any final thoughts on the testing it would be that I was shocked at how, even in a controlled environment like I was in, jumping into a pool, how uh, nerve-wracking it was trying to get out of the motor underwater. So, and I also had a quick-release harness. So, the, the scariest scenario I can think of is foot-dragging water, which I love doing. I know a lot of people love to do it, um, and I can just imagine your foot dragging, you get a little bit too deep, you hit your face first in the water, it all happens quick, you don't have time to take a breath, you've got leg straps to get out of, you've got two chest straps to get out of, maybe you have a front mount reserve in front of you that you have to get out of, your wing came down in front of you, maybe you've got some lines on top of you. If you do not have flotation, you are in deep shit, trust me. Um, the one test I did where I jumped in without flotation, 
uh, I didn't even try to swim. I, I just immediately went for that harness. I knew it was dragging me down. The, the, the gas tank was pulling me up on the back. It's bad news. Okay, so if you fly anywhere near water or around water, get flotation, okay? All right, I know this video was long, but again, I think, I think the message is important. So I hope you guys got something out of it. Be sure to like and subscribe, and if you want, you can follow me on Instagram, at Tom Kubot. Uh, and until next time, peace, guys. Fly safe. Bye. Yeah, that's a wonder. It Damn, happens. now I'm all jumpy. Felt like know, something was dude. on me. Oh, my God. I've never seen a black widow that close. I'm going to jump in. <laughs> Damn, man, I just stepped on it. <laughs>